record this. Okay, let me start from the top, uh, back to the portal. Uh, here we have what we see, what you guys should see on the student side. Uh, you have the view assignment buttons, it's pretty standard. You also have your submit buttons. This is where you're gonna be submitting your zips, things like that. And I'll show you how to zip and submit assignments on the portal. So yeah, um, that's about it. Like as for homework, like I said, home, this homework one uh, doesn't have any files for you. So you're gonna create everything yourself, which is fine. But for the most part labs and other homeworks will have a uh, starter code that you will use if you like press the download file button and I'll sh also show you how you're you can able to download those and then uh, add them to VS Code for you to edit. Uh, so yeah. So if you want to follow along with me, that's up to you. If you you could just watch if you need. Um, but yeah, while I'm showing you guys VS Code, um, oh shit, this is my project. Uh, I will also show you guys like go through some content review from like. Uh, from lecture so you don't feel lost and if you have any questions please feel free to stop me in the middle um, and ask I'm probably not going to look at the chat just because it's I'm sharing screen so just unmute yourself um, and it'll be fine but uh how do I fucking what is this new window okay so when you open vs code for the first time it should look something like this um so it's just the standard text editor means uh, that means you can basically edit text in a file, any kind of codes. And in our in the scope of this class, it'll be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, so if you want to make a new file, there's this new file at the start here, called, and you press that, that could work. Or generally, code like or not code. At the very top bar, you see file, new file, or command N, or I believe control N for Windows. Um, yeah, so you make a new file and now you have a blank file here. So generally what you wanna do first when you create a file is name it. Um, I, that's what, uh, you should get into a good habit of doing that. I'm just gonna save this to desktop. So I'm gonna call this, you're gonna have to call it index.html and like Nick mentioned in lecture, anyone or index.html is always the standard name you should be naming your first file. So this is gonna be the home page when the user goes to a website. This is uh, how a server knows like which page HTML to load first or which home page is what. So that's why you all always call it index.html first. Um, and then any other HTML page you have um, or a file, you can just name it whatever. whatever. As long as you have index first, you're good. Um, especially for submitting, if you don't, uh, your submission is not gonna work either. So I'm gonna save that. So now it knows what type of file it's gonna be. So it's an HTML file. If I didn't have it, all my like, all the text is gonna be like black and white and it's just hard to read. Um, and it, what's cool about HTML is that there's suggestions too. So what, uh, here's a little trick I like to uh, show people. If you type HTML and go, uh, oh, sorry. If you type HTML and you see this HTML colon five option, you can click on that and it gives you the whole HTML uh, structure. So like what we showed you in lecture and it does that for you basically. Um, don't worry about what this stuff is in head uh, for now, you could just leave that there. But remember that like body is where all your content is gonna go or what is loaded on your page. Um, so all the stuff in body is what you're gonna see. Uh, and if you wanna know what title is, that's just the title of your tab name. Um, so your tab name is going to be document and I'll show you how to see view your your change actually I'll just show you right now. Um, so I'm going to pull up my finder uh, so I have my index.html here and if I just double click it so I opened it with safari because I use safari but you could use whatever you use chrome. Um, so as you can see we have a white page just because we have no code whatsoever in our body um, and then but our document our tab name is called document at the top here. So that's what that title tag is for. And that goes into the head. Um, later on, we'll show, next week, we'll show you uh, more about the head and how to link CSS, these things. But today we'll just worry about stuff in the body. So uh, personally, I really like to indent stuff, which keeps my code clean, especially when uh, you should do this because when you go to office hours and it's like a project you're working on, you, your file is pretty big. It's easier for us to understand the hierarchy of your tags um, things like this to read your code 
um, without having to spend like over five minutes trying to figure out what the heck your code is even saying. So definitely indent and try to have clean code first. Um, so like they mentioned in the lecture, there's a different, a lot of different tags. There's P tags stands for paragraph called like, uh, you could just type whatever text, uh, text, text goes in here. Um, and then you save the file. And then if you reload it, you can see we have new text on our page. Um, so we also have H1 through H6. Like uh, I won't do all of them, but like you can just see the differences in all different types of header tags. And if you load that, you can see like there's different boldness and like font sizes of these. You could try. Uh, there's also the M, the italics things. You can nest tags within each other, which is very important to know. Um, so now you can see the goes is italicized but not the text in here. Like, oh, because I only have goes inside the italicized uh, nested tag. Um, yeah, there's also divs. Divs is, are pretty important. They're just like, they're literally just used for like separating clean code, like a space. Like maybe this is just one of the cards you want on your screen. And then there's gonna be another div with the same thing. Uh, so, I'll show you an example. Basically, I'm gonna just type whatever. Like divs don't affect anything on the page. So if I have this right now, it's gonna look like this. I have like a normal section of two P tags. If I take it out, it's gonna look exactly the same thing. Um, so let's try it again. Yeah, nothing, nothing changed. Because like I said, divs are only for uh, splitting sections. And we'll show you why it's really important later with CSS because next week we'll show you how to name tags and then like how to select them and style them. Um, but don't worry about that for this week. Uh, but yeah. So what else was there? I think like there's a lot of different tags are strong for bold. Uh, there's like hundreds of tags out there you can use uh, basically. Oh, let me show image then. Um, Hold on, let me add an image. Oh yeah. Oh, file padding. That's pretty important. Yeah. So an image tag. Oh yeah. What's cool is in VS code, if you type the tag name and you just press enter, it'll give you the structure of the tag. That's what I've been doing. So you don't have to type the less than sign H1 greater than sign, you know, they are kind of auto fills for you, which is great about VS code. So I don't have to spend extra time for that. Um, so image tag, like Nick said, it's a self-closing tag. So there's no closing tag after this. You like we do this, like this sla slash at the end just for um, clean code purposes. This is good practice to show that like this is the end of the tag. Um, of course, it's going to work like this cause, just because that's how the system will recognize it. But um, for good practice, I like to put this just so I know it's the end of the image tag. Um, so for source, you learn like image has an attribute called source and this is where our file path goes. So let me get an image real quick. Uh, let's see, do I have pictures? I do. So let's say I have a picture in the same directory. This is one directory um, that it's, on the same level as index.html. So my, my file path is literally just the name because I don't need to go into any folders and see it already recognizes it for me. So I could auto complete. Um, don't worry about what this alt is. It just means alternative. It's just, it'll show another picture or whatever you say in here in case it can't find the source one. So you don't technically need this. Um, yeah, so it'll show this. Remember everything is case sensitive, like my, JPG is all caps. So that's why JPG should be all caps. Like sometimes it might work um, if it's not case sensitive, but when you submit, it's going to like throw things off and not show your images. So let's see if I refresh this. Oh shit, that's huge. Um, yeah, don't worry if it's that big. One cool trick I'll teach you is there's this, you don't need to do this for homework. Even if your image is this big, it's fine. Um, there's a style attribute you can say, and then I'll say like width. 
200 pixels or something. Yeah, and then that changes the size. So this is CSS. We just kind of did it in line in HTML. I just edited it. But next week, we'll show you how to do like actual CSS on a separate file. So again, you don't need to know what this is. Um, you could do it if you want or if your image is too big. But if, it, if, if it's too big, it's totally fine. You can summon it like this. But yeah, uh, but let's say my file path, like my file is, my image is in college now. So it's not on the same directory. If I had this right now, it's not gonna work. My image is not gonna, cause it doesn't have that image in the same folder. But so what I'm gonna do is it's now in my college folder. So I have to say college slash the name of the image. And that's how it knows, go, go into the college folder and then grab that image and then I'll get it back again. Um, yeah, so this is a relative path, which means just start wherever you are. So in the context of this file, start where this file is. So for index.html, it is technically my desktop directory. Um, so start from there. An absolute um, file path, if you have a slash in the beginning, it means start from the very beginning of your computer. So like you, if you ever seen like the slash user slash whatever your username is for the, your laptop slash library slash this thing, it's specific to your laptop only. And you should never use that in the context of this class because when you submit, we don't have a user called your user, like your username on our server. Like, so that is gonna break the file or the file path is not gonna work at all. Um, we wanna use relative because it starts wherever it is. And in that, in the submission context, it starts where the zip is. So it works like that. So don't use the slash, don't use the, whatever this is, like the tilde, tilde slash, whatever, that doesn't work. Dot slash will work. It's the same thing as no dot slash. That's also a relative path. You can review the slides again um, of how they work, but yeah. Um, are there any questions so far? I know, I'm, I feel like I'm going pretty fast. Everyone good? Uh, I have a question. Yeah, what's um, up? You know the, the starter code for lab? Um, do uh -huh. we create a different folder to homework? Like yeah. it mm -hmm. also has an index.html and it also has an image folder. So oh, for the homework? Yeah, so you do have to create separate folders. Um, so let me show you how, like, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'll just make a new folder. We'll call it asset. Uh, yeah, assets. Man, oh, okay. It's too org. <sighs> Not, um, yeah, well, I'll just put these here for the sake of this demo. Um, and then in assets, I think you guys need to make like an image folder or something. And then you put an image in that folder. Um, so imagine if my image was in there, my thing, like, can you guys tell me like, what should my file path be? Let's say like, uh, let me grab my image and put it back. So if my image is now an assets image folder, what should my file path be instead now? Because it's not in college anymore. If you guys want to just say it out loud. Anyone? Uh, like, uh, did you put the HTML in the assets folder? So it's, no. it's in the uh, same directory. Assets and HTML is the same folder. So assets and then image. Yep. Yeah. So it'd be assets slash image slash uh, image, like the image name. Because now this tells me, it tells the HTML file, go into assets. Now we're in assets. Go into image. Now we're in image. And then now I have a file name called image 6771. Um, and then it should get that image too. So yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. So this is basically like the structure of homework. And now I'll just show you how to like zip it and whatever. Um, this is specific for Mac, but it's pretty similar for Windows. Um, is anyone using Windows here or are we all Mac? I am. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's pretty similar. I did use it for a little bit last semester, but uh, I'll just show Mac first and then I'll, sh uh, 
try to see how Windows works if they change it. But if you highlight the specific files you want to submit, like let's say homework, you need to submit an index.html file and your assets folder that has the image inside. Um, so that means it's these two. So just highlight both of them and then press compress. And that will give you a zip file. Um, I would generally recommend don't rename your zip file. Just leave it as is because um, although it really shouldn't matter on, on our server, uh, we've had some cases where many students, when they renamed it, it broke their submission so they couldn't submit. So don't rename your zip, just leave it once you submit it. Again, so highlight the files you need, uh, right click, press compress, and then it should give you uh, archive.zip or whatever the default name is. And once you have that zip, you can submit your homework. So press submit, you should pull up, the, you should pull up this finder window, and then I just submit that zip I got. And then it'll show me a preview of what my, my site should look like. And this is, this looks pretty much it, right? Like this is what I designed, uh, what I wrote. So I'm gonna press the submit at the bottom. Once I submit, it should be good. If you refresh, the submit button should see, say resubmit now. And you could, at the bottom in the screen bar, you can see the view. So you can press view and see how it looks like on our server side, just to double check in case you need to resubmit. And of course you can resubmit any amount of time before the deadline. So yeah, so this will undarken basically. Um, as for window zipping, I believe it's like new something, create something. And then one of the sub options is uh, compressed or zip folder. Um, I forgot what exactly it was, but let me look it up. I found it, I got, oh, it. You got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so just zip that once you get that zip. Same thing, submit it. Um, don't rename it, just submit it. Um, so yeah, now you submitted your first assignment, basically. Uh, yeah, as for lab, I'll show you, uh, once we download the file, I'll show you how to basically, um, I'll show you how to import it to VS Code. Oh shoot. So. Yeah, so um, my question was about this, like we just downloaded that, it like downloads a folder. Do we mm -hmm. it? Do we keep it in a separate folder compared to our homework stuff? Uh, that's up to you. That's how you want to organize whatever. It's just make sure when you zip it, it's specific to that assignment. Only the files oh. that are pertaining to that assignment, not any other homework, any other lab, um, or else that's gonna make your file size really big. Oh, that uh reminds me. Uh, try not to use images that are really big in file file sizes. Our for some reason, our server with a zip greater than 20 megabytes, it takes a long time to submit or see that pop-up window. Um, it might not pertain to you guys right now when you guys are just starting with like one image, that's fine. But like when it gets to like midterm project and you're adding like a ton of images, try to use like less quality images, especially if they're gonna be small on your uh, screen. There's really no reason for you to add like a three megabyte size picture. Um, just keep that in mind. Our, our server is limited. So try not to get a zip that's hella big. So, okay, so I downloaded my starter uh, zip from this lab and now I unzipped it and I have the starter folder. So what I can do now is I can essentially just drag this folder into here and it sh should open a new window with a project workspace. So it has my starter folder in this left sidebar. Another way you could do is like file, and then open workspace or open. And then you choose that um, same uh, that same folder and then press open. It should be the same thing. Yeah. So now we see all the things that come with it, with it, which is an index.html file skeleton that we gave you. And then like we see an image folder with like different images, like a city, a house, a logo, sushi making, you know. Um, and then you guys can start following along with the rest of lab um, should be pretty self-explanatory. So yeah. Uh, any questions about how to like open project files in VS Code? Cool, okay. Uh, well, if you do have any questions, just let me know. Um, you can work on homework or lab. Either it should, shouldn't even take you like long because they're pretty short just because of the first assignment, but um, I'll let you work on these and 
Let me know if you have any questions. I will stop the recording.